Okay, hello everyone. So this is Haven and I'm going to do a really quick little tutorial on making a button. Wait till you how simple this can be. And then once you see like the simple basic idea of a few of the steps, I am sure you're going to be off and creating all kinds of buttons all on your own. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to be working in front of you. So control A to bring in a mesh cube. My screen's smaller. See if I can get you guys some better resolution when I um, go to the menus and such. Um, I'm going to be working, like I said, from front view. So I'm going to go to top view and I'm going to scale the thickness of this. So S scale Y for the X, E to point 0.1. And that looks pretty good. <laughs> this is still 2 meters by 2 meters. It's a really big button, but no reason to really work in such small scales for an example. I'm going to go ahead and to the modifiers and right away I'm going to go to subdivision and I'm going to go to two views and I'm going to apply that. And you can see I'm starting to get something round and back in edit mode. I do know that I'm going to want to put a little decorative lip on this here so what I will do is I will have my occlude uh, turned off. Or actually, let me go ahead and turn it on for now. And I'm going to um, click the very center vertex, Control plus plus to um, grab all of those. And I'm going to pull them back just a little bit like that, just to dent it in a tiny bit. I will then click my outer edge loop here and I'm going to um, go into front view and hit S for scale and I'm going to get these ones to about where I want them but you'll see that these face widths all turn out to be different that's not a big deal I'm just going to select these four top and the sides hit S and scale them out a little bit so they match about what I want. And the next one, well, maybe that's a little, I mean, it's a little too much. Let's bring it back a little bit. And then I'm going to grab the four corner ones. And I can do the same thing as for scale and get those where I want them. And I think that that's probably pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to take the four center faces. And I'm going to hit W for subdivide, not once, but twice. So I have a nice little grid inside each of these. I'm going to choose the one center vertex for each of those four sections. And let's say this is where my buttonholes are going to be. So I'll hit delete key and choose vertices. And I'll get holes here in the front. So let me show you this little trick that's really nice. If I click on this edge loop and I hit Alt, Alt, Shift, and S, and I pull, you see it tries to make it a circle. It's not a very smooth circle, though, so I'll hit W and subdivide just that, and then Alt, Shift, S again, and pull. And now I've got a really nice round uh, circle there. So let me just hit W and subdivide these all. And then Alt-Shift-S on each one of them. Uh, and see, I should have done those as I went along, because now I've got to uh, select them separately. So, or with border select, Alt-Shift and S. Border select those. Alt Shift S and pull. So now I've got a nice round thing going on here. Uh, the back is not done, not a big deal. We're going to click the center of it. <coughs> Control plus plus and one more plus to select the back half but not the center edge loop. Delete those as well by vertice. And we're going to go straight into the modifier again and use a mirror. It looks like nothing happened, but that's because by default, mirror works on the x-axis. That just means that 
There are two copies on top of each other right now. Let's go ahead and turn the X off and turn on the Y. And let me turn this around so you can see. This is the green axis, the Y. So it goes from front to back, and you'll see that as I turn that on. I get the geometry back here. I'm going to want to make the front of my button interact with the back of the button. So I need to go directly into object mode and apply that right away. And now you can see I've got workable mesh on both sides. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and in front view, I will use border select to select the circle again. This time I'm going to use control E and choose bridge edge loops. Um, and it didn't get the back of it because I have a clue turned on. So I didn't, it wasn't able to work through the mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and turn occlude off. And let's try that again. Border select, control E, and bridge edge loops gives me that nice edge right there, connecting the front to the back. So I can repeat that now with all four of them. So here, control E, bridge edge loops. And control E to bridge them. One more. Control E to bridge them. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a pretty nice button. This button is still a little bit rough. It's not as round and smooth, polished as I'd like. So let's go into object mode. Let's turn on smooth shading and see what that gives us. Again, that's not too bad, but I would like this to be a little softer. Um, I'm going to add a subdivision to it. You might say, well, why didn't you add another subdivision earlier? That would be because I wanted to get a really nice subdivision out on the edit cage for the buttonholes, and I didn't want to have too much geometry there to uh, work. So subdivision surface on again. And now I'm getting something much, much better. And you can even see my little lip there a little bit. We're going to define that better in a moment as well. The problem with this is you can see these puckered edges now, where they were nice and smooth before because we've added this subsurf. It's kind of puckered up and such. So let's fix that. Back in front view, I'm going to go back into edit mode. You have to excuse my sniffles, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to choose this edge loop. And, all right, let's go ahead and I'm going to turn occlude back on. So I'm only working with the front. Border select the front edge loop again. And I'll just make sure I don't have the back one done. Nope. Okay, and then I'm going to use Shift and E, and that's a crease, and you'll see that the crease will pull the geometry from the subsurf really close to the actual edge of the um, edit cage. So again, border select the opening, Shift plus E, and pull. Border select, Shift and E, and pull. Um, border select, or some people say box select, and shift and E and pull. So if you hear those two different terms, they're actually the same thing. We don't really have to do the back, although you can if you want, but the back is going to be up against your clothing. So in most cases, you probably won't need to, but again, if you want to, you can. All right, so now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to select this edge loop. <coughs> And what I'm going to do is I am going to, let's see, scale it out a little bit like, actually no, because I won't be able to do an, uh, an edge loop in here around the button because these are endons, you see, with all of the uh, added edges here. But I can add an edge loop into this outer ring. So let me do that. I'm going to use Control and R, and I have that edge loop there. Control and R, I'll add a second one. And now I can start to do my 
detail and I only need to see a little portion of this from the side view so I can take this edge loop and I think that that's actually pretty good that's that to me is where I would want it this one however I'm going to move it so grab it on the Y and move it down just a tiny bit and scale it up a little like that I'm going to take this one and I will uh, grab it on the Y as well and scale it out a tiny bit again taking this one and I'm gonna scale this one what do I have select oh this one this one again um, I have to select all four sides of it not just the one portion like I did the other ones and as for scaling that there we go if I want to I can even take this one and let's see from front view let me go ahead and give this a border select like that and on the Y just pull that out a little like that maybe let's go into object mode and I'd say there we've got a pretty, let me apply that, a pretty decent button started. And you can use um, all other kinds of modeling techniques to get a string in here if you want to. Um, simply you would take a cylinder, scale it down till it fit through this hole, and you can take that cylinder and extrude it out over so it tucks into that hole. So that's really easy to do. Anyways, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up that you like it. Leave a comment or a suggestion. Anything that you like there, please be nice in the comments. Um, and make sure that you share our link around. Thank you. Happy crafting. Computer crafting, anyways. Bye.